parasympathetic nervous system. So let's start with from head to toe. Let's start with no. Uh, let's start with the skin first, and then we'll go from head. Let's start with the skin first. So in the skin, what do you think the body nervous system does in the skin? So first of all, what are the structures in the skin? Structures in the skin, we have blood vessels, right? Cutaneous blood vessels in the skin. We have blood vessels, right? And then we also have what? We have sweat glands. Remember, we have these smooth muscles that control what? That controls pilo erection. So the air that controls if the head or not skin right, stands or is flat, right? So those are gonna be the major, right? Yeah, structures in the skin. What will sympathetic do to the blood vessels in the skin? Sympathetic will definitely what? Constrict the blood vessels in the skin, right? Para will do what? Dilate those vessels in the skin. What will sympathetic do to the sweat gland? But it actually stimulates sweat glands. So it stimulates sweat glands as well as by auto para is the major stimulator. But why is it also stimulate? Remember, this is where we said that was sympathetic, unlike the other locations where sympath of our construction here will be done by no epinephrine to alpha receptor, right? Or sympathetic. Uh, dilation will be uh, uh, acetylcholine, right? And it's going to be most kind of most kind of receptor. Um, for sweat glands, this is where what acetic sympathetic is actually what cholinergic as well. Para is definitely cholinergic in all locations, right? Yeah, but this is where sympathetic doesn't be the rule of adrenergic post ganglionic neurons actually cholinergic here. Yeah, then pilo erection we also have what so this will lead to smooth muscle contraction. It increases pilo erection. So the air stands, sympathetic, parasympathetic decreases. Pilo erection. What do you think this effect will have on our body temperature? So if sympathetic is constricting the vessels, I'm decreasing blood flow to the skin, right? If I increase pilo erection, if the air stands, right, air stands on the skin, uh, which means that would trap the air stands, it traps air on the skin surface and that will insulate, right? So these two prevent what? They prevent heat loss. So we use medical for heat generation to generate heat. In a cold temperature, somebody will be activated. Constrict the vessels, decrease blood flow to the skin. I can't lose air. I can't lose heat in blood. And then by letting the air stand, yeah, I'm trapping air on the over the skin surface, and that also prevents right heat loss. Why power on the other hand, by doing the opposite, dilating, mostly stimulating the sweat glands, and as well as what decreasing pile erection. This is what this will lead to heat loss. So para allows us to cool off. Sympathetic generate. Okay. So that's game. Head to toe, highs, in the high. What is the effect of sympathetic in the high? So sympathetic supplies already in the organization, right? We know it's going to get to the eye, right? So the cervical parvatical ganglia following the blood vessels, like carotid arteries, right? Gets in there to the eye. So what is it going to do there? Uh, in the eye, it's going to uh, dilate, right? So it stimulates the pupillary radial, uh, 
uh, muscles and that is what pupillary dilation. So it dilates the pupil in the eye. As we do the opposite, right? Stimulates the pupillary constrictors, right? And that will lead to what? Pupillary constriction. So meiosis, mitriasis. Remember honor syndrome, right? Honor syndrome damage to the cervical sympathetic ganglia, right? What happens to what is the triad? Myosis, anhydrosis, and uh, osis, right? So this answers the question, why will damage to the sympathetic fibers, to the skin of the face, why will it lead to anhydrosis? Patient cannot sweat. It occurs, remember, sweat glands, right? Yeah. Sympathetic cholinergic neurons also supply the sweat glands on the skin. So if they are damaged, the patient will be flushed, hot. They can't sweat properly. Then it dilates the pupil, the pupil will be constricted, right? And then supplies the smooth muscles of the labrador upper periphery, right? So another thing it does in the eyes will be what supplies the smooth muscles. Of the levator papillary superioris, uh, sorry, smooth muscles of Mueller. Mueller muscles in the upper eyelid, which leads to what? Opening of the eye, right? So if you damage your organ cytosis, so that's what para does, symbiotic does in the eye, and that's what para does in the eye, right? Constrict the pupils, synthetic. And this pupil and then also helps us open the high, right? Upper high, right? Smooth muscles of the other details. Then we have what also in the uh, head and neck. So if we go down, neck, well, the skin of the neck, of the mucosa. So we have our salivary glands, right? So let's look at salivary glands. All these will be majorly stimulated by what? Stimulated by parasympathetic. Sympathetic too can actually stimulate these guys as well through alpha receptor, but the major stimulator will be parasympathetic. When I'm eating, right? Yeah, digestion, things like that. All right, so that's that. Then, of course, you have mucosa glands and stuff, mostly parasympathetic to stimulate all those. Let's go to the lungs. So, in the lungs, sympathetic will do what? Bronchodilates, right? Bronchodilation through what beta receptor, beta 2 receptor, epinephrine beta 2 receptor. And um, it's going to decrease mucus production. Production. So it decreases mucus production and dilates. So that we can get more oxygen in, right? Or fight or flight. Parasite would do what? Do the opposite. Bronchoconstrict through M3, acetylcholine M3, and then it also increases what? Mucus production. So if a patient wants to undergo a surgical procedure, and I want to minimize mucus production in the airway so that I can better intubate the patient. I can give them what M3 blocker, antimuscarinic drug. It's gonna dilate as well as the mucus production. Yeah, that's gonna be easier, right? To intubate the patient or prevent complications, right? Right. Hard. What does parasympathetic do to the heart? Of course, it increases everything, right? You can think of increased heart rate, contractility, right? Everything you can think of increased by sympathetic in the earth. And um, it uses what beta 1, right? Receptor in the earth. No epinephrine, epinephrine through beta 1. And then it's uh, for the price value, it's going to be the opposite. Everything down. Bradycardia, decreased contract. 
basically the opposite, and this will be what to M2 right? receptor. So M beta one, one, two, they have two, three belongs, right? Beta one, M2 has beta two, M3, right? Belongs. Okay. Everything goes down. Opposite. In the GIT, sympathetic would do what? Counteract anything that would actually stimulate digestion of food, right? That is digestion. So basically decreases digestion of food, decrease mucus production or glandular function generally. So secretory glands, mucus glands, you see everything is down, yeah. And it's gonna what increase sphincterone. Sphincterone decreases what peristalsis. Right. Para will do the opposite. Stimulates everything that mediates digestion. It's gonna increase glandular function. Right. Decrease sphincterone. So sphincters will be relaxed. So that, yeah. Um, or decrease sphincter tone, and then increases what airy style six, and all this will be carried out by M receptors, right? M three receptors for GIA for sympathetic will be right alpha, right beta receptors, mostly likely beta receptors. Yeah, so that will be GI. We go down to the pelvis, we have the uterus. How do we control the uterus? Sympathetic controls the uterus, only sympathetic. There is no parasympathetic input to the uterine smooth muscles. It's only sympathetic. So sympathetic does both uterine contraction and uterine relaxation. So through alpha one, sympathetic will what contract the uterus and through what beta Two is going to relax the uterus. Sympathetic. There is no parasympathetic control of the uterus, right? It's sympathetic. Uterine smooth muscles. So through alpha one contraction, through beta two, right? Relaxation. Yes. Then, Sorry, can you just go up just a little bit? Can I? Can you just go up just a little bit? Yeah, sorry. I didn't get the last part of that. Thank you. All right. Bladder. What is the effect of symbiotic on the bladder? Um, relaxation, right? Relaxes the bladder. Symbiotic relaxes the bladder through beta 3. Spiralizing, we contract the bladder through what? M3 receptor. Then other structure we're missing. Skin, high, salivary glands, lungs, heart, GI, uterus, bladder. We just had him, so it relaxes the blood. Okay, let's look at the sphincter. You will trust me. We trust sphincter, inner sphincter, same thing, sympathetic to the contract. Guys, the virtual upper. Parasympathetic will relax, right? To 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 foster maturation, right? Expulsion of urine and stuff through uh, also M three receptor. Okay, 